This is Marty Howe and Jack Sugden of the Web Conferencing Store reviewing Microsoft Office Live Meeting. So what we're looking at here is Microsoft Office Live Meeting. And this is the control panel interface and you see all these different windows and menu items and we're going to be going over each one of these. One of the uh, unique features of Live Meeting is that all these windows that you're seeing now uh, are only seen by the uh, host and that he has the discretion of opening which ones he wants and moving them around and closing which ones he wants etc but the the participants only see this middle staging area this is what they see full screen and they also have the option of opening up these different windows at their own discretion and the way uh, we select content for the staging area is that the host has um, these different files in his content area and we're going to go over that and whatever is selected whether it's a whiteboard or whether it's a PowerPoint sample that's what will be seen in the middle of the staging area for everyone to share. So before we go into each one of these panels we're going to look at um, how attendees are invited to the meeting. So if we log into the uh, live meeting interface at the back we can schedule a meeting or we can just meet now for an ad hoc meeting we can also set the meeting options uh, such as uh, recording and entry uh, control for presenters and attendees and the meeting time in the lobby we can set up a lobby for um, people to be in until they're invited into the meeting uh, there's additional features such as all the um, Privilege, privileges that are granted to each participant such as sharing and chat and printing PDFs and feedback and all that. There's also the audio and the teleconferencing options that we can set up here and the recording options. Another way to invite participants to the meeting is through Outlook. There's available a conferencing add-in that once it's added to Outlook you can just click on the schedule live meeting tab. There is also an add-in for Los Notes. We should also mention platform compatibility. Office Live Meeting Client requires a download and is Windows-based only and cannot be used on a Mac or Linux. For Macs and Linux users, there is Office Live Meeting Web Access, which is Java-based web client and has certain limitations. And this is what we're looking at here. Uh, there are certain limitations such as no webcam, um, cannot be a presenter, no VoIP or voice over internet, of course teleconferencing is available, and other limitations. So let's look at the different window panes and we'll start with the attendee window pane and we can open and close it by just clicking on that tab. And here we see the list of um, attendees and we can invite anybody by email or call someone on the teleconferencing. We can arrange the view by, we have it by name right now, but we could uh, arrange it by role or room or uh, audio or feedback. We can also find somebody, click on that if we have a large list. We can uh, mute all the voices except me if, if I wish, if it, uh, if it gets too noisy. We also have the option to set permissions uh, for all the attendees, all the privileges, for interaction, etc. And we also can set up a breakout room, although um, VoIP would not be available in breakout rooms, only teleconferencing. So let's look at the content window, and the content window can be opened and closed just by clicking on that tab. And this is a very powerful window because whatever we have showing, have chosen in the content window, it shows up in the staging area and all the participants are going to see it. So we upload content either by dragging and dropping onto the window pane or we can upload a file here. Um, only certain files will get in there very easily, such as uh, PowerPoint and a PDF will will come up in the staging area quite quickly. But some uh, documents such as Word and Excel that when you try to upload the file, they'll ask you to actually share the program. So you have to launch the program on your desktop and then open that particular file. And then it can be shared with everybody. You won't have the annotation tools like you do in with PDFs 
and um, PowerPoint, etc. But you will have the ability to give control to some of the other participants. We can also share uh, polling pages, text page, which again you can everyone can collaborate with that document. Web pages, uh, again it'll show up in the middle here and. Um, very useful for collaboration and screenshots. So here's an example of a poll that I uh, created and you can create a new poll on the fly and then when everyone answers it's shown up in these areas here and then you can share that information with everybody. We can also um, choose thumbnails and that's quite useful say if you have a document that has many pages such as this PDF when you choose thumbnails then you have the option to, to uh, go from one page to the other pretty quickly. Uh, you can lock the um, content to just the presenter and you also have the option to manage some of the content in different ways. So let's look at the voice and video pane. Pretty simple here. We can choose to become full screen or we can give the option of the participant to call in if they haven't uh, called into the teleconferencing information. The host can mute the, uh, the, the audio there. And we also have the option to um, show video panorama. Video panorama is an option that can be used with a piece of hardware from Microsoft called Roundtable, which is actually six different webcams in one piece of hardware that can be placed in the middle of the conference table. So we also have a shared notes menu where anyone in the meeting can type in text and share with everyone else in the meeting. We have a handouts tab where people can, all the participants can download any kind of document to their uh, computer hard drive and that's usually set up by the host. We have a meeting tab with all the information of the meeting including the lobby where the host can uh, give meeting access to people waiting in the lobby and we have the recording tab where we can set up all the options for recording the meeting. So let's go to Jack and he can tell us about app sharing, Q&A, and chat. So now Marty has given me control of the PowerPoint presentation, makes me a co-presenter during the meeting. So I have the controls now to uh, move slides through from one slide to the next. And uh, I'll do that, go to the next slide. I can also use uh, annotation tools, which allows me to highlight points that are being made during the presentation. You can see a little red dot pop up on your screen just to follow along with the points that are being made. There's also other tools that uh, you can use. For example, you can, you can highlight each point with a check mark or use a uh, pointer or whatever. Any, any of these tools are available. You can also uh, highlight a particular point as we go or add text. The next feature I want to go to is the Q&A feature. Any time an attendee could, could send a question to the presenter, and the presenter can choose which uh, question he wants to take in what order, highlight it, and then respond to it. Now that could be a private chat, a private answer, or it could be, um, could be shared with everybody in the meeting. We also have a chat feature. You go to attendees, pick out any attendee that you want to ask a question to, or, or start a chat meeting with. Right click on his name and open up chat. And the chat box will appear both on your screen and the attendee screen. Now, the last feature I want to point out is the application sharing feature, a very powerful tool. Uh, it allows you to open up any application on your desktop and share it with everyone else. Any attendee could also open up the application on their desktop and share it with everybody. So it could be a very important feature of a collaborative meeting. Now, the cool feature about this is that you can give remote control over to uh, anyone to help work on a particular uh, document or Excel spreadsheet or whatever you, you put up on your screen. I'm going to open up one right now. Now I can give over the controls to Marty to come in and he can do anything that I can do on my desktop to, to make changes, edits, upload graphics. It doesn't matter whether he has the same application on his desktop, he has the ability to come in and work on my application and uh, make changes to it. And everyone in the meeting can see the changes and that it's going on in real time dynamically.
you like more information about Microsoft Live Meeting and you would like to compare it to 10 of the other top web conferencing platforms, we invite you to come and join us at webconferencestore.com where we have comparison matrices and decision tree flowcharts. It allows you to go through and find out which solution would be best for your needs. 